Well, my friends, we have officially reached the end of 2012. It's been a weird year. Not only have we survived the Mayan apocalypse, a number of other odd things have happened this year. But as such, it's a time to look back and take a look at some of my favorite moments of the American anime otaku for the year of 2012. So this is my top 10 list of my favorite moments of the American anime otaku for the year of 2012. Let's take a look. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Should old acquaintance be forgot and days of old land sign? For old land sign. For all land sign, we'll talk a cup of kindness yet for days of old land sign. We Number ten, the angry video game nerd shout out. If you've seen my show on a regular basis, you would probably know by now that one of my favorite things to do is shoutouts to other reviewers, be it the Angry Video Game Nerd, Nostalgia Critic, Little Karibo, and others. I also like to do a homage to their types of humor, be it borrowing jokes from them. Though it's a very fine line to walk since you ri also risk making yourself look like the Carlos Mencia of internet reviewing. And one of my favorite shout outs this year was my shout out to James Rolfe, the angry video game nerd where he goes nuts on a really bad dating simulator. A good example would be episode 4, where Kama is stuck playing an unplayable video game full of game-breaking glitches, yet manages to keep his cool. Because if it were anybody else, it would probably turn any respectable gamer into the angry video game nerd within seconds. Well, fuck. This game is hard as shit. Holy fuck. <laughs> fuck you. You son of a bitch. What the fuck is that? Oh, this is ass. For all For Number nine. Don't tase me, Conan. I couldn't resist with this one. When I saw this particular scene from the world God only knows, a certain event came to mind where a young heckler who was interrupting a John Kerry panel during his election was tackled by police and tasered. And I guess the rest is internet history. Now combine these two scenes together and you get some pretty hilarious stuff, dude. Hey, Canon. Show him a thing or two about how one treats women properly. I'm no idol. It's all just a lie. One big lie this is. Don't taste me, bro. Don't taste me. Don't I can do it. Ow! 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 <laughs> For all land sign, dear. For Number eight, the Samurai Pizza Cats review. As much as I hate this show, this was a pretty funny review. It was one of the countdown episodes in a three-part series towards episode 50. And I have had fun making it, but 
It was a painful experience, let me assure you. Especially... What Saban did with the original series, it's... Well, not that great, but... What can you do? Dude, I go to Little Tokyo at least twice a year, and I have never once seen a bunch of anthropomorphic animals walking around. And since when has there been a giant Japanese castle built within the district? Jeez, the amount of fees that they have to pay to the city of Los Angeles must cost a fortune. So we cut to a pizza parlor run by the Samurai Pizza Cats. And yet another discrepancy. When you think of Little Tokyo, you think of, let's see here, ramen, sushi, yakitori, curry, of which I can't eat because it gives me diarrhea, udon, tofu, and a Chuck E. Cheese just off of Onizuka Street. Yeah, do you see the problem I have with this? Pizza is not Japanese, so therefore, why would you expect a pizza parlor in Little Tokyo, a primarily Japanese-American business district located in the heart of downtown Los Angeles? It makes no sense! For all Zombie bowling. Who doesn't love bowling? It's a fun and sociable sport with a lot of skill, and as they could tell you, it's all in the wrists. I used to go bowling quite often myself, but these days I really usually don't find the time to go out and do that. But anyway, Combine bowling with a bunch of zombies and a school bus. And I will admit, even some of the characters I found to be kind of annoying had some really great moments. Like, for instance, the school nurse. They're not humans anymore. They're not people anymore. For old Lang Syne, dear. For old Lang Number six. Fish we'll out of water. Talk. Misunderstandings in anime are a very common occurrence. After all, people tend to react to certain events the wrong way. Let's take My Bride is a Mermaid, for example, where this boy's mermaid girlfriend gets wet and he tries to cover her true identity by covering her fin with a towel and proceeding to dry her and proceeding to dry her off. Let's just make sure that her dad isn't walking by while you're doing this. <laughs> Since she has yet to become an adult, Sun is unable to completely maintain her human form, and her legs revert to a tail whenever she comes into contact with water. Which, of course, leads to all sorts of madcap hijinks. Five, the MD Geist we'll Review. Talk. Oh god, the memories. This was a painful and horrible anime to sit through. I know it was only two episodes, but they were each an hour long, and let me tell you, those, those hours seemed like an eternity to me. This was another one of the episodes that was part of a three-part series that was a countdown to episode 50, and it sure shows. 
Not MD Geist. Please. Anything but that. Yes, remember. Remember how you created me by trying to forget about this anime by using that machine you made to erase your memory of this anime. Unfortunately, the machine malfunctioned and in the process, created me. Geist people, this anime is so notoriously bad, it is practically unreviewable. But seeing how my life is currently depending on it, here it is, folks. For all Number four, the Super Milk Chan Real Show review. Talk. Oh god, this anime. This, this anime made absolutely no sense at all. I wanted to show how painful this anime was when I watched it. So I took a green screen, a padded wall pattern wrapped a bed sheet around me to make it look like a straitjacket, and just went numb throughout the entire review. And as such, I thought it would also be funny to incorporate a text-to-speech program to make it look like I'm talking like Stephen Hawking, and I'm just sitting there in my chair like this the entire time. It was a... Interesting experience, let me assure you. Oh god. What have I done with my life? I am stuck here in some godforsaken psycho ward all because I was tricked into watching this really brain dead anime called the Super Milk Sand Show. And this really sucks. This enemy is so bad, its stupidity has rubbed off onto me to the point I have turned into a freaking vegetable. Now I have no choice but to continue this review sounding like Stephen Hawking or a male version of Glados from Portal. So sit down and take a load off. If I have to sit and watch this god-awful piece of crap, for six hours, the least you can do is listen to 20 minutes of my text-to-speech ranting. And maybe, when we are finished, I will buy you all some cake. For old lang syne, dear. For old lang syne. The Freddy Krueger cameo. Ah yes, Dream Eater Mary. Since this anime involved dream demons, I thought it would be hilarious to include a cameo of the original dream demon, the King of Nightmares himself, Freddy Krueger. And how I did it was really interesting. You see, I used shadow puppetry and an experiment with precise lighting and camera angles 
to film my shadow with me dressed up as Freddy Krueger in a way that my shadow would appear in the shot without my actual body being in the shot. And I think it was pretty successful. I like the way this review turned out. So, let's take a look, shall we? Episode 50, let's face it, episode 50 is a milestone episode, so I wanted to do something really, really special for this review. And so I thought I would review an anime that introduced me into the world of anime, and one of my favorite video game franchises of all time, Pokemon. And let's say that this turned out to be a real, an adventure of epic proportions. But why stop there? This can't be the end. I have so much to do. I can't let Dark Otaku win. I won't! I'll never give in!
Gotta catch them all. For old lang syne, and the number one best moment of 2012 is the Silent Hill we Movie Review. This is it, the big one. This is quite possibly one of my favorite reviews I have ever done on this show. I pulled all the stops for this one. Not only was it the first review that I used particle generators extensively, green screen, it was also the first review that I've ever done on this show where I've actually worn makeup. Here I wanted to make it look like I was a survivor in Silent Hill. Like I was going through the town at the time. And as such, I really like what I've done with this. I love the way it turned out. I love the action. And I love all the effects that I've done. This... This really was... A piece of art. I mean... Everything I've learned from multimedia video production has been put into this. And it certainly shows. So let's take a look. This is a clip from my one of my all-time favorite reviews, the Silent Hill movie review. Why, yes. Do you remember now, Otaku, the day you created me? You wanted so much to be like your idol Goku from Dragon Ball Z that you decided to do the unthinkable. You're not serious! Yes, you remember now. You performed human transmutation on a corpse in hopes of learning how to perform the Kamehameha. And you got your wish. God, I remember now. I remember performing a human transmutation on a living being. I remember standing before the gate of truth. I offered him my appendix, but he wanted my left kidney. And then something happened. In the process, you created me. Created us. And that is the reason of why we are here. Our purpose. After all, without purpose there is no reason why we would exist. It is purpose that created us. Purpose that connects us. Purpose that pulls us. That guides us. That drives us. It is purpose that defines. Purpose that binds us. We are here because of you, Otaku. We are here because you decided to play God. No! That's not true! That's impossible! Yes. Let it haunt your nightmares. Let it sink deep into your soul. And that's it for me for the year 2012. I guess I'll see you in January for the premiere of Season 4. Until then, this is the American Anime Otaku, signing out. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to